A few days ago I put out a video on the DJI O3 system talking about antennas and the idea of that video was meant to be a one-stop place for you to get everything you need to know about antennas on this system. Now unfortunately I did miss one important subject in that video and that was with regards to the antennas on the goggles 2 and V2 and what antennas transmit and what antennas receive. This video is going to be a bit of a follow-on from that, covering that specific subject. We're going to first of all take a look at the Goggles 2, then we'll move on to the V2s, and hopefully when you put these two together, you will then have all the information you need to be able to make the right choice with regards to antenna on your DJI O3 system. So to start, we're going to look at the DJI Goggles 2. Now, everything I talk about on this also relates to the Goggles Integra. The only real difference is the Goggles Integra have fixed antennas. I'm not going to say they're not removable because you can always remove them but they're not removable and refittable without taking the goggles apart. So in that first video I explained that the DJI Goggles 2 and Integra have four antennas. There are two externals and two internal antennas. The internal ones are in a cross pattern here behind the nose cone. Now the setup of the antennas on the Goggles 2 is different to on the V2s in the sense of we have two antennas that transmit and four antennas that receive. To explain this more, I've put together this slide that shows you the exact situation. So what we have here is four antennas in total. As I've said, two externals, which is this one here and this one here, and two internals in a cross pattern. The external antennas are dual band linear antennas that both transmit and receive. So this antenna on chain 0 and this antenna on chain 1 do both transmitting and receiving. The two internal antennas on the DJI Goggles 2 are receive only and they're on chains 2 and 3. It's also worth understanding that all of the antennas on the DJI Goggles 2 are capable of receiving, but it's only the external antennas that are capable of transmitting. So if you were looking to fit external antennas onto this, you're going to be putting them onto the main transmission antennas anyway. And it doesn't really make sense, in my opinion, to go further and actually tear the goggles down and have access to the internal ones, because you're going to get the best benefit from the external ports anyway. Now, these antennas are capable of transmitting at the same time and they are removable antennas on the DJI Goggles 2 and they do use an MCX connector. Now as I mentioned in that video there are limited options with regards to antennas available specifically for the Goggles 2 today. We do have antennas from TrueRC which is their XA patches that go onto the top two ports and we do have some new dual band linear antennas coming from the likes of Flyfish RC as well. There are also some adapters available from Lumineer that will allow you to put any antennas onto these external ports you want. You can get these in both SMA and RPSMA and again that's another option allowing you to upgrade the antennas on these goggles should you wish to. Now at the point of me making this video, DJI don't actually list replacements for the DJI Goggles 2 antennas on their website. So if you were to lose one, you're going to end up having to buy one of those third party ones. Although if you did reach out to DJI, I am sure they would be able to send you one as a replacement. But we don't know what the cost of that would be today. Next, moving over to the V2s. Now, I have covered this in videos in the past, but I felt it was appropriate to put it in this video at the same time, simply because these goggles are also compatible with O3 as well. The Goggles 2 have four external antennas. There are no internal antennas in these goggles. Again, all four of these are actually capable of receiving, but only two of these antennas are capable of transmitting. The transmitting antennas on these goggles are as follows. It is the bottom left and top right as you are looking at them from the front. These are chain 0 and chain 1. And then the receiving antenna is chain 2 and chain 3. Although it is worth understanding that chain 0 and 1 can receive as well. Now, all four antennas on the DJI Goggles V2 are linear antennas. On the original Goggles V1, the antennas were actually left-hand circular polarised. However, these are all linear. There is actually a difference on the antenna ends. There's notches in the end and there are three notches on the V2 antennas compared to two notches on the V1 antennas to signify the difference between them. 
Now, as I've already mentioned, two of these antennas are capable of transmitting. That is chain zero in the bottom left and chain one in the top right as you look at them from the front. And then we've got the receiving chains, chain two and chain three. But it is also worth understanding that all four antennas are capable of receiving, but only these two antennas are capable of transmitting. All four ports are dual band, all four ports are linear and again you can swap these out for external antennas if you want to. They have RPSMA connections and there are lots of antennas available for the goggles too and the V2s have seen a huge amount of interest from manufacturers with regards to antenna development and there are lots of options out there again from the likes of TrueRC, Flyfish RC, iFlight and others. Now, with regards to actually choosing antennas and what ports to use on the goggles, two things are pretty straightforward. As I've already said, it's only the external two antennas that transmit and the internal ones are receive. I personally don't see there being a massive benefit in tearing your goggles down, fitting external connections, allowing you to replace the internal ones as well. I think the best balance you'll get on these is with some upgraded external antennas, although I will go as far as to say there is no specific evidence to say that the antennas that DJI supply on these goggles are not very good and most people get really good performance as they come but if you did want the very best going something like an XA2 may be an option that you want to consider or some of the other linear dual band options from the likes of Flyfish RC. On the V2s we've seen lots of people get some really good results by replacing the antennas. The general consensus is to put your patch antennas on these goggles on the bottom two ports that way you will have one patch on trans transmit and one patch on receive but both are capable of receiving as well however some people have said that they've had better results putting their patches on both transmit ports so that then again is going to allow you to get better performance from the goggles with regards to its transmitting back to the quad capability but for me the overall best balance is one on transmit one on receive with omni antennas on the other two ports that way you're getting the best of both worlds now with regards to choosing single or dual band antennas on these I did cover this in that original video but I will touch on it again now and the overall situation as we understand it today is this the DJI O3 system will use both 2.4 and 5 gigs bands when using it with the DJI FPV remote that is the grey remote however in my tests, I have not seen the DJI O3 system ever go into 2.4 gig mode when not using the DJI remote, i.e. using it with any other third-party remote system, Express LRS, Crossfire, something like that. In that scenario, I personally don't see an issue with you moving to, say, standard 5 gigs antennas if you're not using the DJI remote. Even if you were using the DJI remote, even fitting 5 gigs antennas on the top ports still leaves you the internal antennas and I don't believe you're going to see a massive drop in performance as a result of doing that. I do know when people were testing these goggles they were actually using them with some of the patches for these goggles and had no problems at all. It's just worth understanding though that the O3 system does behave differently depending on if you're using the DJI FPV remote or not. With the remote it will use 2.4 gigs, without the remote it predominantly stays on 5 gigs. It isn't a 100% certainty fact that is the case but in all of my tests I've never been able to observe it go to 2.4 mode without the DJI remote. On the V2s, it's very much the same situation. So again, it is dual band capable, dual band with the O3 system when using it with the DJI remote, but only in 5 gigs as we understand it when using it with third party remote systems. And again, choosing a single band 5 gigs antenna is not going to leave you too many issues. The only real difference on these goggles is you do have the option to replace all four antennas, so you wouldn't be necessarily leaving the original ones on the top. And that then puts you into a situation of making a choice on do do you want to replace the original two antennas with something like single band omnis or do you want to go with all four patches? Again, a little subject I did touch on in that other video with regards to polarization because O3 is linear polarized. The antenna that comes with O3 is linear polarized and these antennas are linear as well. If you did move to circular polarized antennas on the goggles, you are potentially introducing about 3 dB of drop, but you've got to take into account the gain you're going to get from increasing the performance on those antennas. For instance, if you moved over to XEs, you're putting in 10 dB plus of gain 
compared to what you're getting on the stock antennas, which is between one and three. So whilst you might be losing some gain with regards to polarization, you will be gaining it elsewhere. And there's a lot of other factors that come into account around antenna performance and efficiency. And as I did say in that other video, I do have a specific video on antenna performance, and I will put a link to that in the description of this one. So that is pretty much it. I hope that fills the gap that I left in that original video. I am frankly a little bit annoyed with myself that this didn't end up in that one. I don't want to take that one down to put this in, but the two of them really do go together. And hopefully as a peer, that will tell you everything you need to know about the DJI O3 antenna system. Now, if you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. If you would like to support the channel, there are links to Patreon as well as Buy Me A Coffee in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons for supporting the channel. We would not be able to make content like this without your support. And if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking out those links. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. I'll speak to you soon.